No longer remind you we won't have evening service uh, because we'll be spending most of the day together. We have been studying the subject of what Jesus taught. Last week we started out looking at two things that Jesus taught, probably some of the most important things that he taught. Number one, his view of God. Jesus was Trinitarian. He believed in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. And that's what we believe as our own church of God. I said a good illustration if you want to consider it. Think about a quarter. Uh, you can look at a quarter. It's made up of two dimes and a nickel, amen, or 25 pennies. But it's still one quarter. And that's kind of helped you, gives you an illustration of how to look at that. We also looked at what will bring judgment on us. We looked at the fact we're going to be judged by our faith in Jesus and by our obedience to the Word. And that I want to give you a definition this morning. I want to explain something to you before we get started uh, with the message today. What is the difference between judgment and salvation? Everybody's going to be judged. Amen? Amen. Everybody. It don't matter rich, poor, what race you are, what color you are, what religion you are. Everybody's going to be judged. Uh, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and put their faith and trust in what he did for them on the cross and repented of their sins, those are the ones who are going to be saved. That means delivered from the consequences of rejecting God and his word. Now, along with that, let me share with you our foundational text for this series. Uh, if you will, look with me at John. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pull that next slide up for me, Brother Glenn. And let's look at that. Foundational text. Matthew chapter 10, verse 23. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22 and 23. Our foundational text, it might not be in the slides, is John... Chapter 3, verse 23, there it goes, 36. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. That's one of two conditions in life, amen? He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. On him. I don't know about you, but that makes me want to know what Jesus taught, and I need to believe it. Amen? Amen? And we can take that to the bank and understand that. Now, let's look at Matthew 10, 22, and look at what Jesus started teaching about what it means to be saved. And you shall be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Listen to it again. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of your Son, Jesus. Lord, we love you, and we thank you, God, that we're two or more gathered together in your name. There you are in the midst of anything we ask you for. You said you would do it for us. Lord, we thank you for what you brought us through. We thank you for bringing us through COVID. We thank you for the financial difficulties you brought us through, for the emotional hardships you brought us through, for the times we've been sick in our bodies. You've been faithful to us. And God, we just give you praise and glory right now. Lord God, I pray that you would yes, touch me with that anointing that makes preaching effective. Oh, Father, I pray that you would give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what your spirit would say into the church. Help us, Lord, to not be forgetful here as only to see that ourselves, but help us to be doers of thy word. And, Lord, we'll be ever careful to give you the praise and glory and honor for all that you do. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shake your neighbor's hand. Tell them you're glad to see them in God's house today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. Jesus taught his disciples and then he did not just teach his disciples and expected them to follow with him. He sent them out two by two, giving us an example that as the children of God, we are not supposed to just come to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and whenever we gather together, but we are to go out and as we go, we are to preach and we are to minister. Now, when you get a chance, go home and look at this whole chapter, Matthew chapter 10. Let me just touch on some things that Jesus said leading up to this statement. He said that they were to go and to preach to the lost sheep of Israel at this time, not to the Gentiles. First of all, he went to seek and save Israel. And then you will see the 
same thing as you look in the book of Acts. When Israel rejects, then God goes to the Gentiles. And the call is for whosoever will. Brother Tim brought it out this morning that God will not force you to get saved. He will not force you to lay down sin. He will allow you to choose which way you want to walk. And then he will make you aware of the circumstances of rejecting him. So, Jesus sent the disciples to Israel. They were to work miracles. How many of you know in Jesus' name we can work miracles? Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, it's not us, but by the power of the Holy Ghost, we can pray for people and see them healed. We can see devils cast out. We can, hallelujah, we can see financial miracles and God do great things for us. Now, people might say, well, isn't there a lot of phony out there? Yeah, there's a lot of phony out there. But you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't let the fake affect your faith. Don't let the phony ruin you. Keep your faith in Jesus. How many of you have ever been hurt by a Christian? I mean, somebody claiming to be a Christian. Maybe they said something to you that hurt your feelings. Maybe they did something. Don't let what that person did to you represent God and his whole, his whole kingdom. We need to make sure we are walking and living our lives in a way that lines up with the word of God. So Jesus told his disciples to work miracles. They were to trust God. Are you trusting God this morning? Amen. Are you trusting God regardless of what you're going through in life? Then he gives them some warnings. As they were to go forth and minister, he told them to beware of men. We need to be careful about men. Men will do you wrong. They'll try to give from you. They'll hurt you. They'll destroy your faith. They'll discourage you if they can. And a lot of times they don't even realize they're doing it. But the devil is using them to influence you. Don't let them hurt you. Don't let them beat you down. And then he warned them that they were going to face Jewish, Jewish opposition. The Jews did not receive Jesus Christ as Messiah, did they? They rejected him on large part. And not only did they reject him, they rejected his followers. Hallelujah. And we need to understand something. Not only did the Jews reject the disciples' teaching, many Gentiles rejected the disciples' teaching. But guess what? They still went and they still taught. Giving us an example, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to go forward and keep teaching, keep preaching. Like Brother Tim said earlier, when the going gets tough, you keep trusting God, you keep holding on and believing Him for the good times are not on this side of planet Earth, they're on that side. When we get the glory, we'll wear a robe and crown. Hallelujah. Why does God allow good men to suffer? Because the Bible says that through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of God. He doesn't say that the road to heaven is paved with gold. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them from them all. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been through some stuff. Can you say that this morning? If you haven't, just hold on. You're going to go through some stuff, but God will bring you out. So understanding this, Jesus, as he sent forth the disciples, he gave them this word. He said, you shall be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. When you got saved, think about that time you got saved. Maybe it was on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night or a Wednesday night. Maybe you got saved like me at a Baptist lady's kitchen table after a Halloween alternative. That was the beginning of your journey. That was not a one-shot fits all type of situation where you did that one thing and you can rest. No, you've got to endure. You've got to press in. You've got to seek and, and find and be obedient to what God wants you to do. Notice what he says here. We are to overcome the hatred of all men for his name's sake. And we are to keep holding on. When God heals me, when he doesn't heal me. When God answers the prayer, when he doesn't. When he gives a financial miracle, when he doesn't. Because I'm not in it for what's down here. I'm in it for what's waiting on me on the other side of glory. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give me praise. So the first thing we need to understand about salvation is we've got to endure hard times. Now let's look at what Jesus said we've got to go through while we're down here. Matthew 24 verses 1 
is a great chapter because the whole chapter is Jesus' teaching on end time prophecies. But let me share with you some things about this important chapter in the Bible. We'll look at what he taught more specifically later on. But notice what it says here. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do ye not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, Not one stone shall be left here upon the other that shall not be thrown down. Verse 3 goes on and tells us this. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? Catch that. What shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So in Matthew 24, Jesus starts teaching and explaining to his disciples, answering these three questions. Now, this is what I want you to understand. Jesus said unto them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Beloved, there's a lot of false doctrines out there. If it goes against this book, it's false. If it's just part of this book, and not the whole story. It's a false teaching. Amen. You need to get the whole counsel of the word of God. It's my job, my brother Tim taught this morning in Sunday school, to give you the whole counsel of the word of God. To feed you that spiritual meat so that you can be healthy and you can be ready for what's coming against you. Now look at what it says here. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. They're going to come preaching Jesus. <laughs> Notice what it, see it, what it goes on and says here. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Notice what it says here. For nation will rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, <coughs> pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Look at your neighbor and say, it's just getting started. If you think it's bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you think World War II, World War I was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. When what Jesus said and what it says in Revelation, it's going to make those look like a picnic. Notice what it says here in verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated. Here it is again. By all nations for my name's sake. Look at verse 10. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will be hated of one another. And then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will wax cold. Now I want to stop there. Jesus gave us a lot to realize we've got to go through. You've got to overcome false teaching. You've got to overcome people who are hurting your feelings. Oh, I'm preaching right now. Hallelujah. You've got to overcome wars and rumors of wars. You've got to overcome famines. You've got to overcome these things that's going on. How many of you realize things like that's happening right now? Amen. Jesus did not say that he would protect us from it. He's going to go through it. Brother, that's like, dude, we didn't get together before and talk this over, did we? No. God is telling somebody in here today, don't give up because you're going through hard times. Don't sit there and wonder where is God because you're facing difficulties of life. Jesus said that in the world you shall have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. Hallelujah. And because I've overcome the world, you will overcome. Hallelujah. You hold on to him. Look at what verse 13 says again. He who endures uh, to the end shall be saved. You start by confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing in your heart God raised him from the dead. That is the starter's pistol at the beginning of the race. Hallelujah. But you've got to run that race with patience. The apostle Paul said before he was up, he, he was beheaded, he said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. There is now henceforth laid up for me a crown of righteousness which no man can take away. Beloved, I know you're going through battles. I know you're going through difficulties. But I want you to understand the key word this morning is through. Listen to that again. Through. You're going through it. Hallelujah. I took my truck the other week to Lulu's 
And I'm so glad that when you start there, you know, you just kind of get, they guide you onto that little rail and you put the truck in neutral or the vehicle in neutral and you start on the race. And how many of you know whenever you get to that thing beating on the side of your car, it sounds something terrible going on. You're getting the dirt on it. And then you go through and they'll drop the suds down on it and they'll begin to whack the, the spray will come on it. It sounds like they're beating your, your vehicle all over the dead, found it. I'll take Bailey with me and he'll go. Crawl up close to me, look at scared to death. But how many of you know when you come out on the other side of that thing, the dirt's gone, hallelujah. And you've got a clean vehicle that's been washed and it's ready for you to go and vacuum it and clean it up. In the same way, I want to remind you this morning that the things that you're going through is not meant to beat you and defeat you. It is meant to make you a vessel ready for God to use. Go ahead and give a praise. Hallelujah. The enemy wants to beat you up with it. The enemy wants to beat you down. The enemy wants to get you to say, oh, there is no God. How can there be a God with all the evil in the world? Hallelujah. The fact that we have not been taken out in spite of all evil proves to me there is a God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that part of salvation, part of, of receiving that reward is to endure the hardships of life. Now, let's go on and look at Matthew 24, verse 22. We're going to touch on these scriptures again at another day more in detail. But notice what it says here. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The Lord says to us here during these times of tribulations and trial, you're going through a lot, but guess what? I'm going to shorten the period of what you're going through. Hallelujah. For your sake. You, can be, you don't know what God has kept you from, beloved. Because He loves you. Because He cares about you. He's going to shorten those time periods. Now, as I got to study this, I, I wondered about this. When I was first saved, I, I got to wonder, are, will the dark days really get shorter? How can you shorten our time uh, spinning around on planet Earth? How can you shorten our time around? If you don't know, I'm a geek. I love science. And I'm always studying science. If you look at my Google feed, you'll see a whole bunch of scientific uh, things up there. And I sit down there and I play around with it and try to see what lines up with the Bible and what doesn't. But this is something that's interesting. I, we know that God is talking about there. Jesus is saying the time period of judgment, of the tribulation. It could be a lot shorter, but because of God's mercy and grace, he's going to shorten it. But notice this. It could actually be shortening of the days because listen to what happens here. Published May 9th, or excuse me, January 9th, 2021. Or, yeah, make sure I got it right. There we go. July 20th, or 19th of 2020, there was a shortened day. It actually was 1.4602 milliseconds shorter than a 24-hour time period. Now, that might not seem like a whole lot of time, but if you want to see how long time is, when you get a chance, take your phone and scroll back through your conversations and see how many times you thought you talked to somebody for a long time and it was only for a few seconds. You might have said, man, I was on the phone for 15 minutes with them and then you turn around, two minutes. Beloved, what I'm telling you this day is that with God, all things are possible. How many of you know that if the sun expands like many says it's going to do, it'll shorten the days? And we could go on and on and on with that. But the main thing is that you've got to be ready. You've got to endure. You've got to overcome. Now look at how do we get saved. Remember I told you everybody's going to be judged. We're going to be judged by our faith in Jesus Christ. We're going to be judged uh, by our actions and our deeds. Now how do I get on the winning side? Mark 16 verse 16. There are those who will tell you, well, all you've got to do is believe. There are those who will tell you, well, you've got to put your name on the roll of the church. You've got to be a moral, outstanding person in order to be saved. But according to Mark chapter 16, verse 16, Jesus said this right here. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. Notice what it says here. If you believe and is baptized, you will be saved. Now, a lot of times the devil will want to throw something into your mind. Well, what about so-and-so? What about those who die before they can get saved? I don't want to worry about all them. What about you? 
Do you have opportunity to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? You should. Do you have opportunity to be baptized? You should. Why? Jesus said, those who believe and is baptized will be saved. I talked with Michaela not too long ago. And she's believed in the Lord, but before she goes to Disney, she wants to be baptized. So we're going to have a baptismal service. I'll give with Brother Tim and we'll set up a time. You need to do what Jesus said. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. Now what you waiting on? If you believe and are baptized, you will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. It goes right along with John chapter 3 verse 36 that I read to you at the start of the service. He who believes the Son will have life. But he who rejects the Lord and his teachings, the wrath of God abideth on him. Jesus said, be baptized. Jesus said, believe. The question then, have you? Well, what about, you know, the devil will throw a lot of what abouts about at you. You know that? If I went by what, all the what abouts, I'd never get in my car and drive. We were coming back home last night from Gavin's, from Gavin's graduation ceremony. And this 18 wheeler come bearing down. Like he must have forgot that he couldn't go light speed on, on the road construction in Columbia. He came bearing down on us out of nowhere. And there was just between me and him, this little old Hugo. And I knew that Hugo couldn't make it. And the question, why did that man have plowed into me? If I let my whatabouts get a hold of me, I'd never get out on the road and drive. If I let all the questions and all, oh, hallelujah, I'm talking to somebody right now. If I let all the worries and all the doubts intimidate me, I will never accomplish anything. But you've got to move by faith. You've got to trust in Jesus. Notice what it says here. He who believeth and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Why? Because God told you what to do. And then you rejected it. How many of you, don't raise your hands because you might have, but normally you don't get a, a spanking by mama and daddy unless you do something that they told you not to do, right? How many of you have ever gotten a spanking for something that they didn't tell you what to do? They didn't say, Johnny, don't mess with that stove. And you went and messed with the stove anyway, and you got a spanking for it. Not only that, you got burnt, but... Did you get burned and then they still spank you if they didn't tell you what to do? God is telling us what to do with his word. God is telling us what to do in order to be saved. God is telling us the consequences of what will happen if we reject him. Now, look with me at John chapter 10 verse 9. And we're going to get ready to wrap this up this morning. John chapter 10 verse 9. Jesus says, is talking about himself here. He says in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That means every other way that claims to be a way to God is wrong. Jesus says this, I am the door. If anyone, everybody says anyone. So who can be saved? Anybody can. Black, white, green, yellow, purple, homosexuals, lesbians, uh, transgender, whatever you want to put in there, they can be saved. God will change them. God will work on them. Notice what 